To put it in simple terms, the INFJ personality type is nothing without their highly valued virtues and moral standards. Known to be fearless in their pursuits of worldly justice and compassion, not only is this highly moral personality type always willing to do the right thing, but they also have a few unique standards that some people wouldn't consider so virtuous. Welcome, or welcome back psychos! Before we get into it, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed to our channel, as well as to click the post notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, let's get right into the video, starting with number 1. Low morality is one of their biggest pet peeves. When meeting someone new, one can only hope that they're approached with the basic set of morals we expect from able-minded humans. However, the overly observant INFJ knows firsthand that, unfortunately, that's simply not always the case. Sure, everyone has fluctuating values that vastly differ from one another, but when it comes to the basics of being a kind and upstanding citizen, INFJs can't wrap their heads around cruelty and indecency. Whether it's rooted in their empathetic values or, rather, their logical understanding that humans need each other's help in order to thrive in this world, one of this compassionate type's biggest fears is coming off as hypocritical when it comes to their respected virtues. Number 2. They can't help it. Ironically, the INFJ doesn't exactly choose to stay on this moral high ground as perfect scored as they do. Most of the time, they have no choice but to invite their morals in on their mental debates. And because of that, they can't escape moral decision making even when it comes to what advice to give. One of their highest valued morals, honesty, is a great example of this. Realistically, INFJs know that sometimes it's better to keep honest opinions and observations on the down low until they can gauge how that other person may take it. However, with their forever squeaking morals coaxing them to be the most honest they can be, they get put in a pretty sticky situation. Luckily, usually INFJs have a way of navigating through information and details to form hard truths in a way that is easier for others to digest. Unfortunately, because of this, they're often the ones to give their loved ones the hard dose of reality nobody else is willing to give them. Number 3. Their values aren't always cut and dry. In comparison to the majority of the other 15 Myers-Briggs personality types, the analytical INFJ personality type is known to really utilize their personal values and morals as a part of their cognitive skills. On top of the everyday morals we expect all humans to have, INFJs hold very particular beliefs of what's right and wrong. In fact, not only are their beliefs rather particular, but paradoxically, they also fluctuate and aren't as black and white as people expect morals to be. For the INFJ, this can be rather complicated when it comes to explaining to others, especially for the means of boundary setting. It can be difficult to explain that they hold each and every one of their morals at such high value, yet they can also be changed at any given moment should new information come into their awareness. Number 4. Their morals help them set boundaries. Speaking of boundary setting, we all know INFJs can have a tough time with this crucial aspect of maintaining social connections. The biggest obstacle they're faced with overcoming in particular seems to be knowing when they're just being overly sensitive and picky in their relationships and when their required boundary is accounted for. Luckily, eventually the INFJ matures past the point of deciphering these two types of boundaries, concluding that they need what they need and no amount of mental and emotional energy is worth overlooking it. However, before that maturity happens, the INFJ is faced with countless tests and lessons where they're pushed to use their morals as means of boundary setting. For example, INFJs would never make someone else feel guilty or ashamed for declining an offer to spend time with them because they know that they also use this healthy boundary setting tactic from time to time. And on the flip side, since they don't make others feel any type of way for taking time out for themselves, the next time an INFJ needs to take a rain check, it won't eat them alive. 
Whether the other person is okay with it or not, the INFJ's moral compass will remind them that it's a proper boundary to have. Number 5. They use their morals to manage in the 3D world. Deeply imaginative and secretly adventurous, if the INFJ was wired with anything other than extremely high set morals and values, they'd probably get themselves into a decent amount of trouble. I mean, isn't that the purpose of morals in the first place? To keep us out of trouble? Of course, this is all hypothetically speaking. But considering the last thing any INFJ wants to do is blindly conform to rules and systems, if there were no morals to keep them level-headed, their strong beliefs could spin them in directions that would probably be looked down upon by society. In fact, being considered so independent on so many fronts without their extremely prominent morals nagging them to stay up to date with the bare minimum of social morality, such as keep in touch with family, helping others and contributing to society, INFJs would probably choose the complete hermit life, remaining open for the rare visit. Number 6. They enjoy the thought of being a virtuous person. Some INFJs would say they've been straying away from the goody two-shoes title they received in grade school thanks to their reserved outer mannerisms. However, when INFJs reach adulthood, they realize that being considered a human of high morals is a reputation they're actually quite proud of. Besides kindness and empathy, being known for having a strong set of morals and the experience of using them to the advantage of everyone involved is an admirable thing to be known for. And so, while they weren't exactly wired with these high morals because they enjoy the reputation it gives them, it's a lesson in itself for this personality type just to come to terms with feeling proud of this admired aspect of their personality. Number 7. Their morals put their empathy into action. Like we said, if INFJs lacked their high morals, they probably wouldn't be so keen on helping others. Sure, they're equipped with an empathetic need to help their fellow humans. However, their innate empathy skills are separate from their moral bounds. This means that, although INFJs feel the feelings and experience the emotions of others, it doesn't mean they necessarily have to act upon them. This is where their deeply set morals come into play. Their empathy and morals are indeed separate mental functions, but they go hand in hand in order to push the INFJ to achieve that superhero human level they strive for. While it seems exhausting at times, this advocate type wouldn't feel at all fulfilled in life if they didn't have the motivation to fuel their empathetic gifts. In fact, if INFJs were stuck feeling all the feelings of the people around them without the understanding that they can make even the smallest difference, the life of an INFJ would be considerably miserable. Number 8. Their morals can attribute to an INFJ's difficulty in fitting in. Every INFJ knows what it's like to struggle with things that they can't really explain to others due to the understanding that not many people relate to them. Since childhood, most people with this introverted and introspective type question why they have such troubles with certain aspects of society. More specifically, they question how they're going to go about fitting into a world of increasingly laxed morality with their high values that they rightfully refuse to put aside. As a matter of fact, this morality-related difficulty is one of the INFJ's most prominent struggles. And it comes about in more than one area of life, ironically, usually without them even realizing it. An example of this in today's westernized culture is the influx of meaningless casual sexual experiences and the music and media surrounding it. Sometimes, INFJs can't help but to wonder how people can be so narrow-minded in thinking that hookup culture is no big deal. Not only that, but it also worries them when it comes to going out and socializing themselves, because sometimes it's difficult to lay these out-of-the-norm moral grounds out without seeming like a total grinch. Well, psychos, that's it for today's video. Before you go, let us know in the comments below if you've ever been told you seem like a virtuous person as an INFJ. 
Also, make sure to leave us a like, share with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a video.